She is one of the most powerful women in Indian banking and finance. The head of India's biggest private sector bank, Chanda Kochar, has proved her worth by steering ICICI Bank through some tough turns. Her success here has allowed her to earn her stripes and step out of the shadows of her predecessor, K.V. Kamath, one of the best-known faces of corporate India. When I caught up with her to find out about her journey to the top, I began by asking her why women dominate Indian banking and what has worked for them here. I actually have a very simple theory for this. Uh, I think banking has been one of the sectors where women started participating many, many, many years ago. Uh, you know, even 30 years ago when I started my career, there were actually uh, certain sectors, manufacturing sector and some other sectors where women would not even apply for a job. But, you know, there were a lot of women who would apply for a job in the banking sector. So I think today you have, you know, 30, 35 or 40 years of women participating in this sector and therefore you have a lot many more women in the middle management and the higher management levels and therefore you have a larger corpus to choose from even when it comes to choosing the CEOs. Uh, whereas there are other sectors in the Indian economy who have just started this journey much later. When you talk of the entire Indian corporate sector, it's only now that the corporate sector has become so much more conscious about building gender diversity. So as that consciousness has come in, you have seen, you're seeing more and more women entering. But then, you know, you have to give it that much time for them to reach the middle and the higher uh, management uh, levels. Your own career has been fascinating because in 84 you joined uh, ICICI at that time it was a term lender and you know a lot of your work was uh, in factories you know managing clients etc. How tough or difficult was it especially when you went into the factory floor many times? Yes it was uh, I would say it was uh, quite a, uh, you know a little bit of a challenging environment and at that time uh, as far as the outside ecosystem is concerned. First of all, I must say that ICICI, within ICICI, it was always been a merit-based and gender-neutral uh, atmosphere. So uh, I don't think there was any challenge within. But clearly, you know, at that point in time, 30 years ago, for all the corporates to expect that a 20-something girl uh, would come and start inspecting their factories and, you know, visit factories uh, and sometimes, and a lot of times, travel overnight by train to reach those factories and so on. Uh, it was not something that was so very common. So, uh, you know, I think it was a little bit of a challenge. Was there resistance also? Uh, no, I don't. you sat across the table and, you know? Uh, no, there, I think there was a little bit of the fact that, oh, this is not commonplace. Mm -hmm. But I won't say there was resistance. I think finally, you know, your work and uh, the dignity with which you carry yourself makes a lot of difference. So, I must say that I didn't face resistance. I, I always saw acceptance. Uh, but clearly, uh, you know, it was not like a commonplace thing uh, at that point in time. But your rise within the bank was pretty spectacular. So I've got some numbers here. Um, it took you 10 years to become an AGM, Assistant General Manager. But in the next seven years, you got five successive promotions. And I think you headed some of the biggest, uh, you know, um, s segments within the bank. Uh, tell me, what was the turning point according to you in your own mind? I think when you look at a career, uh, you know, you cannot look at one or two of those points. I think you have to look at uh, the entire career in terms of the various steps and the way it has evolved. Uh, I think what I feel, uh, you know, most satisfied about my career is that I've got the opportunity to actually run different parts of banking. So, you know, while you may say that I've just been a banker and I've just worked with ICICI, but actually, I can see very few bankers who've done project finance, uh, then done the wider corporate banking, then done retail banking, uh, then looked at international banking, then also run some of the control functions of the bank from, you know, the finance and risk management and so on and so forth. So I think I've had the opportunity to really um, either set up or lead, uh, you know, different businesses within ICICI and run them at a time when they were at their nascent stage. So in a way, it's been like an entrepreneurial experience of 
starting with scratch and setting up a business and making it grow and learning through that process. And that's really been the most satisfying part of it. You know, career. one thing interesting that I found about you is that one would think, looking at your success, that you were very ambitious and you said, you know, I'm going to go out there and, and be at the top of my job. But what was interesting, and I want to ask you about this, is that in, in an interview you said that, you know, I always looked at the next step. I didn't necessarily look about 20 years ahead, but it was always about doing a good job and saying how I can go to the next step. So, you know, that, that's interesting because nowadays people are in a hurry to get, get to the top, you know. Yeah, but uh, you know, you have to remember that uh, the entire journey is made up of various steps. And, uh, you know, if you only look at the end and don't mind your steps as you move, uh, then you can't move forward. So, uh, I think it's very important to look at the next step. And I would say it's equally important to even look at where you are at that point in time because you know my focus always was that at whatever level I was am I doing the job better than what others could have done and I think that makes a lot of difference so how do you do uh, the job that you have at hand uh, in a much better manner uh, with all its excellence and that ensures your next step and that's how you keep moving forward. Mm. So was there a plan in your mind when you actually went around doing this? Because, you know, for example, in the retail banking side, you, you almost set it up, you know, in the, in the corporate book side. Again, you were very instrumental in putting it together. In the international banking space also, you were one of the early people who actually came together. So was it also planned or do you think it was, you know, it all fell into place? Um, you can say neither of the two because it wasn't really planned as such, but uh, you know, as the organization kept diversifying into different businesses, uh, I think people thought that I had the potential to be able to set those up. But at the same time, I think I had the confidence to say, I will take on that challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's always also important to, you know, sometimes get out of your comfort factor and take on a new challenge. And when you take on a new challenge or a new job, you know, for instance, retail, uh, it was entirely new for me. It was new for ICICI and it was quite nascent for the country. So in that sense, it was in a way taking a risk of saying, uh, you know, I'm living in a comfort factor. I'm actually handling the corporate side of the business, which is more than 50% of the organization in any case. Uh, do I really need to get into something and set it up which may remain as 1% of the business or may become 50% of the business trying to learn along the way. Uh, but you know when you take on that challenge uh, you have to first be confident that you will be able to learn and second you have to put in that hard work and, uh, and you know absorb it and then, and then make it happen and, and actually keep learning along the way. As long as you make sure that people come up on merit the meritorious people will grow.